Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press. This afternoon, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu received in audience the acting chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Zak Adediji, as well as the chairman of the Tax Policy Review Committee, Mr. Taiwo Oyedele, where the committee presented to Mr. President uh, a report on quick wins achieved by the Tax Policy Review Committee uh, in conjunction with directives given by His Excellency Mr. President on the day that committee was inaugurated. Uh, after listening to a presentation uh, by the committee chairman, the president uh, directed the special advisor to the president on policy coordination to liaise with the secretary to the government of the federation and the chairman of the tax policy review committee to ensure that the recommendations of the committee are swiftly and immediately implemented across all ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government uh, to ensure that there is effective synergy uh, and to ensure that every institution of the federal government is on the same page with respect to how uh, tax policy uh, will be implemented uh, henceforth. His Excellency Mr. President has also made available an opportunity uh, for the uh, recommendations of the Tax Policy Review Committee uh, to be made a topmost priority uh, at the next sitting of the Federal Executive Council meeting uh, on Monday. Uh, Mr. President will continue uh, to emphasize the importance of uh, ensuring that our tax authorities are not taxing the seed uh, but are taxing the fruit. Uh, and that will continue to be the focus. Uh, we want to ensure that uh, our citizens are receiving uh, the best uh, of uh, public service provision, uh, and that is only going to be possible when we have expanded the tax net uh, to such an extent that uh, we are collecting uh, tax to GDP, uh, reaching the 18% threshold uh, as directed and targeted by His Excellency, uh, Mr. President, without any undue burden being placed on the most vulnerable segments of our population and without uh, in any way uh, increasing uh, in any substantial form uh, the taxes being levied uh, on large-scale industry, medium-scale industry, and small-scale industry uh, in the country. Thank you very much. Like a few months ago, Mr. President set up the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform. And uh, part of our remit is that we divide our work into short, uh, medium, and long term. Uh, graciously, today, Mr. President received uh, the president, uh, the chairman and of the committee uh, to brief him on the progress so far. And we think it is also good that uh, uh, the chairman of the committee brief, uh, brief the press so that um, uh, the public can know where we are and the expectations. So I will yield to the chairman of the committee to brief, and then if there is uh, specific questions, he will, uh, he will answer, and then he will be here to answer it. Thank you so much, Mr. Taiwo. Like a few months ago, Mr. President set up the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform, and uh, part of our remit is that we divide our work into short, uh, medium, and long term. Uh, graciously, today, Mr. President received uh, the president, uh, the chairman and of the committee uh, to brief him on the progress so far. And we think it is also good that uh, uh, the chairman of the committee brief, uh, brief the press so that um, uh, the public know where we are and the expectations. So I will yield to the chairman of the committee to brief, and then if there is uh, specific questions, he will, uh, he will answer, and then he will be here to answer it. Thank you so much, Mr. Tao. Thank you very much, the acting chairman of the FRS, uh, my friend and brother. And um, <clears throat> good afternoon, 
Thank you. It's afternoon, yes. Good afternoon, uh, gentlemen of the press. Um, as the acting chairman of the FRS has rightly said, we were, <coughs> excuse me, inaugurated by Mr. President on the 8th of August um, as the Presidential Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms Committee with a mandate um, to help reform the fiscal system and the tax administration, uh, not tax, actually revenue, because it's bigger than tax for our dear country, Nigeria. Um, the work we have been given to do has three pillars. One is fiscal governance and issues to do with fiscal policy, coordination with monetary policy, issues to do with respect for um, legal thresholds, debt to GDP, debt service to revenue ratio, deficit in the budget as a ratio of GDP, and so on and so forth. And more importantly also is the coordination with subnational. So the second pillar of our work is revenue transformation, which is where we're looking at both uh, non-tax and tax revenue, uh, including how do you optimize value from government assets and natural resources, um, how do we gain more efficiency from government-owned enterprises so that they can yield uh, returns for the Nigerian people. The third leg or pillar of our work is to do with economic growth facilitation. Now, the, the principle behind this is that at the end of the day, the most sustainable way for any country to generate revenue is to grow the economy. When businesses uh, succeed, when individuals prosper, they pay taxes. Um, for us, that's the most fundamental. So we're looking at how can we remove the impediments to businesses, to trade, to, you know, even think about young Nigerians, um, many of them very smart and intelligent. Uh, but today we have legal and tax impediments that will not allow global organizations to hire Nigerians in Nigeria to work within the global value system. You know, you call some call centers and an Indian is speaking. We think our English is better than the Indians. Why are they not hiring our young people? So we'll remove those uh, impediments so that people can then gain employment and dollars while they're here in Nigeria, which not only helps with our foreign exchange management, but ensures that people also have uh, prosperity to live themselves and families from, from poverty. And of course, they'll pay taxes on their income to the government. So we have been working um, very hard since the committee was inaugurated. We have six subcommittees, and we meet every single day. There's a subcommittee meeting every single day. Sometimes, you know, we have two meetings in a day. For us, that's the sense of urgency uh, in dealing with issues uh, affecting our country. So um, even though we did not present the report to Mr. President exactly, uh, you know, when it was 30 days, because Mr. President was busy outside the country with very important engagement from G20 to United Nations General Assembly, what we had done since then was to start speaking to the various policymakers, uh, from the central bank leadership to the uh, finance minister, who is also the coordinating minister for the economy, to the FRS and the Joint Task Board, uh, and even to state governors. We also had sessions with the Senate. So we have been actively engaging with various key stakeholders, um, pretty much trying to put the framework in place for implementing our recommendations. So what we did today was to formally present the report to Mr. President, uh, but I'll say that, uh, you know, once we get the nod from Mr. President, it will be like just switching on, uh, you know, the tap, and then the implementation starts uh, immediately. And uh, there's so much work for us to do. This is just, uh, you know, milestone number one, is what we call the quick wins. Uh, the second phase where is, you know, where we are now is the critical reforms. Those critical reforms involves even rewriting our major task laws, addressing uh, something that everybody in this room will be very much uh, familiar with, multiplicity of taxes. We have over 60 taxes and levies, officially collectible by federal government, state government, and local government. Unofficially, those taxes are over 200, um, making life difficult for our people. So the objective we have, and that's what we're working towards, is to bring all of that to a single digit. So the taxes at all levels of government combined 
uh, we think should be less than 10. Because actually, um, about 96%, actually more than that, of our revenue across federal, state, local government currently is generated from less than 10 taxes. And we've seen countries like you know, South Africa generating more than our entire national tax revenue from just one tax. So there's no evidence to show, in fact, the contrary is true, that the more the number of taxes you have, actually the less revenue you collect because you just create the opportunity for leakages uh, and some non-state actors collecting money and keeping it to themselves. We're speaking to uh, traders, uh, Matan, and they said to us, people selling pure water in the market collect, they call it tickets, seven tickets every single day. Why should someone who is just trying to, you know, hawk pure water to keep body and soul together have to pay seven taxes on a daily basis? It doesn't make a lot of sense to, to us. So, um, now we are at that phase of rewriting our laws. Uh, we spent time with the Senate and we would also do the same thing with the um, House of Assembly, and the whole idea is we think that some of the reforms we need to introduce, uh, we have to go to the Constitution itself. Um, you know, lack of clarity about taxing rights uh, between um, levels of government. We are all familiar with the dispute around VAT, value added tax. You know, we think that the solution will not come from the courts, it will come from Nigerians coming together to say, actually, this is the best way to deal with these matters. We have commenced our public um, consultation and stakeholder engagement. It's open until the 15th of November. I'm glad to inform you that after just a few days of opening up that platform for engagement, we have received input from every single state in Nigeria, and we're just starting. Um, so we'd also encourage the media to help us uh, project and amplify those messages. We want to listen to every single person who has something to say. I was particularly delighted uh, because in our stakeholder engagement groups, we have Nigerians living with disabilities. Uh, of course, we have farmers, we have Nigerians living in, in the diaspora. But I, I met a, a man who was on a wheelchair, and he stopped me and said, you know, are you Mr. Taiwo Yedele? And I said, yes. So he already opened his phone and, and showed me the message we published. Uh, saying that we're also going to engage with people with disabilities and say thank you very much for remembering us. And, and my heart was, it was as if you, uh, there was a light that just goes off. And he said to me, they're working on their submission now to send to us, right? We want to listen to everyone. We want to hear everybody out. We want to co-create a solution for the future of Nigeria that we want. So let me stop there and uh, we're happy to take your questions. Thank you.